Hey guys, today I will be taking a look at the privacy focused search engine Mojik, which is based in the UK. So Mojik is one of the only UK based search engines being based out of Brighton in the southeast of England. It is pretty rare for a search engine to use their own index, but this is an example of a search engine which does. Uh, so this makes it a pretty unique search engine, and that isn't just limited to the index they use, but also to the search engine's features. Mojik includes some interesting and unique features, such as emotional search. Uh, so as you can see on screen right now, uh, I've got emotional search uh, pulled up here. And emotional search basically allows you to search for web pages sorted into five different emotional categories. Uh, so there's love, haha, which is meant to be funny, wow, you know, like uh, surprising, sad, and angry. Uh, so the last two are quite self explanatory there, and it apparently uses MRAs technologies. Uh, to actually sort search results into these five different categories. And this isn't really a feature you will come across on any of the other search engines because uh, this is a pretty unique idea. If you do use one of these emotional filters, uh, Mojik will only provide you search results which convey that emotion according to the deep learning algorithms uh, which Mojik use, which are developed by MRAs Technologies. One possible use case I could think of for these filters is if you just want to read a positive news story, uh, then you could filter it using the haha <laughs> or love filter. Uh, so, you know, if you just want something nice and positive and you don't really want any news uh, which could be kind of upsetting, then this could be a good option. Alternatively, of course, if you're looking for shocking results, you could use the wow filter so you can get something that's a bit surprising. And although these are pretty interesting filters, I do find they are sometimes a bit random and arbitrary. Uh, so please do keep that in mind when you're using these filters. And also do keep in mind that Mojik say that this feature is in beta. One other feature of Mojik is Substack Search. And this allows you, as the name implies, to search Substack articles. Mojik announced this feature last year in a blog post in which they said that Substack had similar views to Mojik when it comes to censorship and free speech. Mojik also has image search which allows you to search either Pixabay or Openverse. Pixabay is the default image site on Mojik and Pixabay has more images than Openverse. However, if you do need an image which you can use for free under a Creative Commons license, then Openverse is a better option. However, which one you pick on Mojik doesn't really matter too much because you can toggle between the two image sites on the search results page. Mojik also has a news search filter as well as a dedicated news page which serves some of the current top stories. The news search and news feed uses the feed fetcher Mojik crawler to index results. This means that you might find some news articles that you may not have noticed otherwise and with Mojik's emphasis on free speech uh, you may find some outlets which may not be indexed by Google News. Mojik also allows you to turn off Wikipedia snippets by toggling off the info box option on the search engine preferences page. You can also pick the number of news results you want to be displayed next to the main results and you can turn that to zero if you don't want to see any news results at all. Mojik Focus is a feature which allows you to set up multiple focuses which, 
which only search through up to 20. It also allows you to exclude up to 25 subdomains of these sites using the exceptions field on the focus preferences. There are also some template focuses which are dictionary, recipes, time and weather. This is one feature I think I might actually end up using more regularly, uh, especially for comparing different weather forecasts for where I am going, or for checking different dictionary definitions for a word. Mojik also has a feature called Search Choices, which is a feature that allows you to pick a different search engine to search with. This is pretty helpful because Mojik doesn't always provide the most relevant results. So it is pretty helpful to be able to query a different search engine that may provide better results. One privacy feature which you can enable in the preference settings is referral data. This prevents search query data from being leaked to the destination site. So that site can't just see what you were searching for before visiting. Now moving on to something slightly more developer orientated here, uh, so just like many other search engines, you can embed Mojik search on your website, and Mojik has a dedicated page on their website, which allows you to style the HTML for the search box. However, this of course isn't really much of a concern for your average user, but it is nice for developers. On the privacy front, Mojik promises that they do not store any identifying information on users such as IP addresses, search history, or click behaviour. Mojik claims they are the first ever search engine to state that they do not track their users, and they stated this all the way back in 2006. Mojik was actually a search engine before this, uh, and it started out as a project by a University of Sussex student. However, it was only in 2006 that it actually became a privacy-focused search engine. When it comes to the environment, Mojik touts that its search engine runs on the UK's greenest data centre, which is run by a company called Custodian. Now, of course, some consumers won't really care about how green the data center which runs their search engine is, but for consumers that do care about the environment, this is definitely a positive. Although, of course, there are such as Ecosia, who actually donate money for every search that is made on their search engine. So, of course, if you care about the environment, Mojik might not be your top option. When it comes to mobile applications, Mojik has both an Android and iOS app. The app is basically just the Mojik website using an embedded web page as far as I can tell. Sadly, the Mojik app is not available on F-Droid or any other third-party app store, so you have to download it from Google Play or you can download it from Mojik's website, as you can see on the As I mentioned previously, Mojik has its own search crawler called MojikBot. This means, unlike many other search engines such as DuckDuckGo, it doesn't have to query any third-party indexes to give you results. Although DuckDuckGo does have their own crawler, unlike Mojik, they do actually also query the Microsoft Bing index, and that makes up the majority of DuckDuckGo results. Now, not that many search engines use Mojik's index. Uh, one example I could find was the search engine Kagi. Kagi is a search engine which I have previously reviewed a couple years ago, and back then they didn't use Mojik's results, uh, but in mid-2023, Kagi documentation was updated to indicate it used Mojik as a third-party provider, and I also actually asked the founder of Kagi about this, and he said that Mojik was added as an external search provider, a few months ago. Linking into what I just said about the crawler, Mojik does provide developers a way to retrieve data from the Mojik index 
using the web search API, but you will have to contact Mojik to discuss pricing for this. Mojik also provides the site search API, which allows the customized results, which allows for customized results, which could be used to index your specific site. Now there are three different price tiers for this API, bronze, silver and gold. You can also contact Mojik to negotiate custom pricing. As well as being a privacy focused search engine, Mojik also has an ad platform that allows advertisers to advertise on Mojik. However, Mojik does still promise not to track users, so specific user profiles aren't used by Mojik to target ads to specific users. Right now, you have to register your interest to advertise on Mojik, so it isn't as easy as signing up for Google Ads, for example. Although Mojik does take money from advertisers, it is good to see them handling ad targeting in a privacy respecting manner. As well as having their own crawler, Mojik also has its own forum where users can discuss Mojik and other topics as well as ask for help. Mojik also has support documentation, but if that doesn't answer your question, you can also contact Mojik using their contact form on their website. Mojik has a newsletter which allows you to keep up to date with the latest announcements. So in conclusion, Mojik is one of the only truly independent privacy focused search engines that doesn't rely on a big tech search engine crawler. However, the results of Mojik aren't always the best. And of course, you can find better results from search engines which do use the Google or Bing index. And the UK jurisdiction isn't exactly the best. However, it does offer a truly interesting and unique search experience that I would recommend you at least check out, even if you end up concluding it isn't for you. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. You can like, subscribe and share if you want to see more of these search engine reviews. I will also be coming out with a review of the EE mobile network here in the UK. So make sure to subscribe for that. Once again, thank you for watching and goodbye.